on this episode, self-criticism. I'm a dingus. Criticism of our work. There's some garbage on the screen, that's kind of bad. But with some nice screen fading, we shall overcome. And bam, that's cool, huh? Mm. Hi everybody, this is Christian, this is Laserdisc Academy, our advanced Shmup tutorial, episode 84. Alright, so, um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to wrap up all of the um, uh, state machine kind of stuff, um, we want to maybe add fading, and then we're going to jump in to uh, options and, you know, redoing the shots. But before we go there, I wanted to change one fundamental thing that I did change in my uh, uh, demo, my prototype, uh, pretty early and I forgot about it, so let's do it right now. All right, load cow map. <coughs> I'm a little bit, I'm still a bit coughing today, so it's gonna be a bit of a challenging recording session. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn the outline of the spaceship pink. I'm gonna turn it pink. And the reason why I'm doing this is that I want to be able to maybe change the outline, the color of the outline of the ship later on. And in order to do that, it should have a color that is not inside the, the sprite of the ship, right? And we are using the blue color for the canopy. So I want to use just like a, some kind of different color for the, for, the, for the outline. And I think pink is a good choice here. So let me qu uh, wrap this up real quick. All right, so now the outline has been changed. Let's run this beautiful pink ship. Let me, I always have to uh, turn down the volume. Beautiful pink ship, there's no flickering, anything good. So now we're gonna use code to change this back into blue. And again, later on, maybe we could have the ability to maybe make it flash or change color, depending on what kind of, what kind of state you're in. It's just like a little nice detail that I found to be incredibly useful as a way to communicate uh, what is happening. All right, so it's here. We're gonna do pal, uh, I think it's 14. I'm gonna change this to blue, I think it's 12, right? <laughs> yeah. And then we're gonna turn it back again. Just a little thing here. Oh, um, right, when we, we do it before we change everything to white. Like this, because here is where the ship is flashing. And if we change the color after the ship is uh, sh ship is flashing, then we would always have an outline, I think. Let me see if this works. Yeah, it's nice and blue. Let me get hit. Yeah, perfect. <coughs> it still feels so wonky to play this old version. Ah, we, need to, we need to hurry up. All right, so now I want to add um, fading. Fading out, like this... this this effect where things fade out to the to our game. Now, in previous games, we already did that before. I used to use a function that I copied from uh, GelP. Uh, that was a good function, it was very compact. The problem was, the way is this worked was a little bit weird. And I never quite understood how the way this works. It used like one array and it was kind of like jumping around in this array. And I don't know. In the meantime, there has been, I mean, it's pretty old now. But there has been development, uh, there is Comet and Bomb, Comet Bomb, uh, the famous developer, um, made a beautiful script, like a generator for different fade profiles. And you can get that thing online, and we're gonna use that. And, but we have to kind of like make sure that it's not, not using too many tokens. So let's go. All right, so this is the address, it's cometbomb.net slash pico8 slash fadegen.html. It's a really cool tool. Um, so what it does here is, um, Mm. You can manipulate a lot of the different different uh, parameters. For example, you can set which color we are fading towards. And you can see the preview of how the fading would work. So if all the colors are supposed to fade out to black, this is what, what it would look like, right? And then here is just the code for that, right? Um, you can ch uh, choose to use the hidden colors or not. So the hidden colors are these colors, the secret colors. I said I'm not gonna use the secret colors in this game because they make development a little bit more complicated and I mean I know it's an advanced mock tutorial but you know we can make our lives a little bit uh, easier that way uh, but I think for the fading it's fine to use the hidden colors so if you turn it off it will just um, fade between the colors from the default color palette p color palette 
And like this, it uh, takes advantage of all of the available colors. Cool. So I want to actually fade to white. And the reason here is that um, I might have some effects where things are exploding and then I want to have the ability to maybe make the screen flash white or just get a little bit brighter, right? And if I make just one fading table that just goes to white, that will uh, make my... I will be able to use that fade table for those effects, for those explosion effects, but also for fading between different scenes in the game. So we're just going to assume, we're going to set in stone that all of the fading in our game that's going to be happening is always going to be fading to white. And this is what, what this will look like. So this is the code. I'm going to copy the code. All right, and I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to put it in here for now. Uh, right after the font. I'm going to paste this in here. All right, so there is the fade table happening, right? And that fade table is just a huge, huge uh, array of like, you know, saying which color at which fade value should fade into which other color, right? It is a very big table, right? It's 259 tokens. That's a lot of tokens. That's, that's too many tokens just for the fade table. And obviously we can make this a lot easier by just turning it into a, uh, using a split function. And that's what I'm going to do now, right now. So let me sit down real quick here and change this crazy, this crazy table into like one split uh, statement, split 2D statement, because it's a 2D uh, fade table. Uh, it's an array of array, right? Okay, so let's do that real quick. So we're going to do something like split. It's not going to be local, by the way. It's going to be global. Split 2D. And then let's go. All right, it's one big line now. So we reduce that 200 something tokens just to far four tokens. Um, it might, no, it, this is the init function, it's fine, okay. But now we have like this fade function here and I wanna copy this one or edit this one out. Uh, and I'm gonna put it into tools. All right, so this is the function that actually does the fading. Uh, by the way, um, this function does not fade correctly. It uses the uh, draw uh, table. Uh, we need the um, screen table. So just to clarify what that means, the draw table is you'd set, first you change the palette and then you draw and then the drawing will be according to this new palette. Uh, the screen palette is applied to the entire screen, to everything that's already on the screen. And I think you need to do a comma one there. I'm not exactly sure, let's see. Yeah, pretty sure it's comma one. Okay, well, let's do a comma one here as well. Now this function takes a parameter called i. I'm gonna remove that parameter and I'm gonna use instead a global variable for that called fade perk. So um, fade perk, I'm gonna set it to zero. Uh, fade perk is a variable that I'm using it. Uh, this is a setup I'm using in a lot of uh, programs. Basically, when it's one, it should be completely white, and when it's zero, it should be completely uh, normal colors, right? So it's fade perk. But like this, uh, this function here uses i to to clear to set you know how how strong the fading is supposed to go. So what I instead going to do here is local i equals fade perk uh, multiplied by times sixteen. So with fade perk is one i is going to be 16, and if fade perk is 0, fade i is going to be 0. And then the end, rest of the code is going to be basically the same. Um, I didn't implement fade perk into these other things here because I think um, the math here doesn't quite work right. You always need to do the time 16 anyway, so you kind of have to keep this in here. And that is going to be our fade function. All right, so now we actually have to do the fading. And again, this is setup setup I'm kind of like using all the time. I'm going to do the fading in a draw function. Uh, here's the draw function, right? So after all of the drawing, um, yeah, even after the debug, I guess, right? Uh, we do something like this. And I'm putting into, into the global draw function um, because I want to be able to fade everywhere, even on like the start screen, you know? I want to be fable fading everywhere. And the fading function is also something that should run constantly. So the setup generally will be like uh, fading from white to the normal colors 
is something that happens while the program is running, right? But fading to a color, fading into white, is we're going to have a special function for that. But for now, let's do it like this. So we're going to do something like if fade perk, if that's greater than zero, so if there is some amount of fading that has to be done, then here we're going to fade and now I want oh, uh, it. I want the system in broadly speaking always to be fading back to normal colors. I don't want to be get stuck in white unless I really want that. So what I want to do is I'm going to actually add this functionality right here. So something like fade perk equals max fade perk comma fade perk minus and I have a number for this 0.05. Uh, actually, it's going to be zero feedback like this. So this ensures that every frame fade perks gets whatever it was, it gets reduced by 0 0.05 until it reaches zero and then it stays at zero. Uh, I'm going to actually do, yeah, I need to do the fade afterwards because if this reaches zero, I want to be doing one fade afterwards to get reset to, to a, like a global thing. This also means that we might never reach like completely white, but uh, that's fine. And this is nice because this function is like this entire fade function, like there's stuff happening there, right? But that's only get executed if there's any fading happening. Otherwise, we're not gonna touch that function. All right, and this should get us actually somewhere already. So let's see if we can, let's, let's see if this runs. This, this does run. And then let us see if we can, if we initialize with Fade perk one. There we go. You see how it how it fades from. There's some garbage on the screen. That's kind of bad. But what I like about this system is that, um, for example, in an update function here, when we are starting the game, I can I can flash the screen by just writing this this line. This just this little piece of code flashes the entire screen. That's nice, isn't it? So it's like you can run, and bam! That's cool, huh? And of course now I could, I don't want to do this, but I could, when things explode, I can also fade the screen, right? Right? I can use this effect everywhere. And, and it doesn't have to be this extreme, I can fade, just flash it just a little bit. And just a little bit of subtle flash. So it's a very versatile system, I love it a lot. And you can't stop me from using this. Okay, this is good, but it's it always flashes the screen, right? It gets white and then fades out of the white. So how do we slowly fade into the white and fade out of the white? Um, that is something we're gonna do using some uh, additional functions. <coughs> so I'm just gonna copy these two functions. I, I'm pretty sure I used these in, in the pork like tutorial. I'm gonna paste them in here. It's a lot, but hear me out. First, let me, let me show you this function. This do called the weight function. And the idea is that you supply it some amount of, uh, some number, right? And it just loops, it just loops these, this amount of frames, uh, or at least it, loop, it has a loop that loops this amount of time. And each time we're gonna do a flip. And the flip is actually just, just draws a frame, just weights a frame basically. I mean, it doesn't draw, it doesn't call the draw frame. It just, it just waits for a frame, right? And so this will basically just wait this amount of frames. That's kind of like a very useful function. So we have this, and then we have this function called way fade out. Um, so this is kind of like a function where you set a speed and then a wait afterwards, um, a very useful function. So basically you said like, there's some like default values in, in case you don't wanna set anything. This basically does the same thing as the wait function here. Uh, but every frame, it adds something to fade perk. It adds some value to fade perk and then it fades. So kind of like if fade perk is at zero, it kind of like adds 0 0.04, for example, every frame. So fade perk goes up to one until it reaches one. And then it, uh, the fade function waits for a couple of frames, just like to, it's kind of built in here, so you don't have to, you don't have to have a separate wait function. So it's fades to white and waits a couple of frames while it's white. Very useful. And then we can use this to, <clears throat> so 
So here, before we start the game, let's say we're just gonna uh, go fade out 0 0.04. Let's wait a second, right? Let's try this. What if we just use the default values? Yeah, that's good. We don't have to wait. Anymore. We're gonna use, see if we need that build and wait. We might not need it. But yeah, that's the way it is works. All right, so let us discuss. I, I made up my mind how the freeze frame function is supposed to go. You remember this? You remember this? So we have a variable called freeze, and if that's set to a number, it will count down the variable. And if it reaches reach zero, it calls this function die too. That this how, that's how we die, right? And that's good. That's okay. You know, otherwise, it just we just do the update, update for function like normal. I like that we are advancing the timer only when we're not free. So in freeze frame doesn't actually advance the timer. That's good. I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna make this uh, into something we can use for all sorts of other things. And we're not gonna use it right now, but I want to maybe already uh, start using this here. So. Instead of the die2, we're going to use a variable to store a callback function. And we're just going to call that callback function. So we're going to say, we're going to call it callback. Like right, this, right? Callback. And then let's go to die. Right? And then here we're going to go call. Oh, I turned on hiragana. So here we're going to say callback equals die2. And we're not using the brackets here because we're not actually calling the function. We just assign this function to this name. So now callback is die2 and nothing will change. It's fine. It's just I can input a different kind of callback function. I can, I can make different effects take advantage of the freeze frame now. It doesn't always just do the end game over after die two. It can also do something else. Um, and then we can do something like here, for example. Let's do fade out here. Write this. I, I want to see how it looks when I die. Okay, see, I didn't like that. I didn't like, like there was an explosion, I heard an explosion and so forth, but I didn't see anything. Like did nothing happened, right? Uh, it, 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 the, the dying was a little bit too fast. And I want to maybe uh, remedy this. But while we're here, by the way, I want to go to the update function and also do a fade out here when we are uh, going back to the menu. Just everywhere a fade out a little bit. So to add a little bit of a, of a thing there. Okay, <clears throat> so how are we going to do this? All right, so what I want to do, do is to show one frame of gameplay after that, or at least like animate the explosion of my sh own ship exploding, right? So let's go to die two, use die two. Now, when we die, <clears throat> we're gonna have a, another function, die three. Something you can do, uh, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try to actually make this an inline definition in a second here. But yeah, so here when life gets down to zero, we're going to do uh, freeze 60. So we're going to wait for a second. Um, call back equals die three. And then or we already fade out. And then all this stuff gets put into oops, like this, right? Something like this. And I'm going to set lives to zero so we don't have minus zero or minus one lives on the screen. So let's see how that works. I'm going to set to lives to zero in a second so we die earlier. Okay, I did not like that. Did you see that? Oof, yikes. Okay, so I got the second of gameplay, but I didn't see an explosion. Uh, so we need to go, go, we need to explode. But wait, we are already exploding. Oof, yikes. Okay, so 
Um, hmm, here's the problem now. So we are skipping the update function. We are doing the draw function, but we're not doing the, the update function. So while the freeze is happening, I want to maybe to update something. And we're going to do this real easy. While the freeze is happening, we're going to go call while. So there's call back, but we also have a call while. If I run this, does it even work? No, there is nothing assigned to call while. I'm going to assign something to call while. Let's assign it something silly, Abby, ABS. Just so something is happening, right? Okay, so right, run, running ABS while, uh, while the call while is happening. That's good. And then I want to do the function uh, that does the particles. Is it do parts? What? There's do part. There's only do one do part. Huh. Let's get this one out. All right. So I know it's it's not good. We're gonna we're gonna make this more efficient in a second. So we're gonna do this die while call while equals die while. And then just to make sure that and at the end we're gonna go call while equals abs. Right, we're going to reset it to something neutral, like this. <clears throat> okay, so let's run this. Oh, right, I want to lives. I want to set lives to to zero, so I die immediately. You saw the explosion was happening. That's what we wanted. So um, now I just let's 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 save some tokens here because this was a little bit of a mess. Uh, I don't mind this too much. I don't mind this too much. It's it's a pretty beefy function. But here, let's 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 try it. I never did this on so you can instead of defining a function, this function will ne never get used except here, right? So we can just as well do something like uh, the uh, callback equals function <clears throat> and then put this in here. And and call while function and oops. like this. Now we could turn this into a function and call this an update function as well. We're gonna we're gonna mark this with a with a star because we might save a, just a few tokens here. But yeah, well, let's see if that works. I love it. There was some blinking happening there. Ah, I don't like that. Okay, so but we have invis, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's set invis to. Um, so, all right, yeah, we are setting to 30, let's set invest to 16, does, does that work? Yes. And by the way, I was wondering, does that uh, save tokens? So wait, so we are at Three nine four seven. Yeah, it's two tokens saved. Nice. Yeah, this seems this seems like a good death. And can I? What if I keep pressing the button? Oh, it just restarts very quickly. Okay, so the problem is like if I keep the button pressed, or if I keep any button pressed, it just jumps right straight into the game. And I don't, know, don't like that. I would like to require people to let go of the button. But that's something we're going to do uh, later on. I'm going to put it on the list, on the to-do list. Okay, when I look at the time, we are already way into the episode. And like starting a big topic like options is maybe something that we're going to do in the next episode. For now, I'm going to use the rest of this episode to actually make the game over screen a little bit nicer. A little bit nicer. And also making sure that you can actually play through the game, can actually win the game. That's also something that we haven't done yet. So let's try to do that. First, let's try to find where, um, where the game is over. 
Let's print this to the screen and play through the game. So like 670. Let's go 670. Let's go an update function. So let's hear some like, this is basically gameplay. And this is collision. As if collision wasn't gameplay, but you know what I'm saying. But actually, uh, yeah, I wanted to do here. So we're gonna go, if scroll is greater than 670, I think. I, did I say, six, I, I said 600, uh, hmm. whatever, it's gonna be fine. Uh, then we're gonna see what happens when you die. And we're gonna do something similar. Yeah, here. Fade out and go over. That's all we need. Right? And we might turn this or even this into a function later on. But for now, it's fine. Because we're calling in two places, right? Uh, but yeah, let's, let's see if this works. No, wait, what is happening? I put this in the wrong space. I'm a dingus. Here's where it goes. It worked. Music didn't didn't fade out. Um, where is music? There it is. All right, here. So we fade the music out. All right. So now I want to make the game over. A little bit nicer. Right now, you're just, I'm just printing you dead on the screen. That's, it's not quite as nice. Um, so let me start out with, I, I was, always want to start into, into this, right? So I can always see what's happening. And then we, I want to draw the score onto the screen. So, so basically I'm gonna take this code, which prints the score. And I'm gonna put this in, in the Gover function. I'm gonna leave this around. <clears throat> and I'm gonna turn on this. Okay. By the way, this is for tokens. We might turn that into a function if we use it a lot. But for now, it's okay. So uh, we take the score and then we print it. Uh, but now instead of printing it, uh, write justified. <clears throat> We're gonna print it um, in the center of the screen. And like, like, let's let's go like this. Let's see how that looks. Nil. Okay. Yeah. Score equals. I don't know what is what is what is the score one. What what is one? That's that's a good score. Um, okay, a little bit higher, perhaps. Not too high. Yeah, that seems like a good place. Then let's pr print score just above it. Where are we printing this? 50, so let's go 44. Hmm. 43. Let's go sh outline. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's make it a little bit. Seems good. Um, now I want to maybe clarify, you know, like like what happened, right? I want to have some kind of text that tells us what what happened. So we're gonna go go vert equals um, game game over exclamation point. <clears throat> and let's print it with this new text, uh, this new font. Um, go vert. Let's run this. Okay, uh, 30, yeah, 20, oh, oh, no, 40, 39, whoa. 
Yeah, now I want everything to be a bit further down. It's it's one of those things. Let me figure this out. I'm not sure if I can find out how wide the text is. Also, the exclamation point is the wrong one for this font. So let's just not use it. Okay. That seems good. That seems like a good, maybe a little bit further down even still. Yeah. And this is not the final one, but I just want to have something pretty on the screen. I think that's a good idea. Okay. So uh, I want to see what happens if you do Kong. Congratulations. See, this is not good. Level finished. Yeah. Or like we just finished. Okay. You know what? Let's 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 do it. Let's do it. Let's do 64 minus govert. Hashtag govert. Um, times five, times four, times three. Yeah, that seems good, right? That's good. That's, that's fine. And then game over. Uh, it's it's good enough. Uh, and then we're gonna figure out. Uh, I'm gonna put it in a to-do list. Better way to center text. We're gonna do menu here. And then when we die, so here, uh, we're gonna go finished. And then here, here we're gonna go game over. Like this, right? I just wanna make sure that, I don't have to define Govert, right? Yeah, yeah, it will get resetting the variable uh, every time. So let's see if we can die. That's right, game over. Again, not perfectly centered. Ah, it's gonna be fine. Now let's see if we can play through the game. It's good, it's good, it's good. Um, again, not the final setup. Maybe later on we're gonna uh, add some graphics, but it's not too bad as a finishing screen. Like what else do you need? Uh, the only thing I would really want to have, but that's something we're gonna deal with later is high score. I want to be able to save a high score and I want to notify players if they achieved a high score here at the end screen. But otherwise, this is good. So we have a better game over screen, we have extended the game over screen. And this is it for this episode. And because this is the end of the episode, as always, I will say a big thank you and a huge shout out to all the people who are supporting me, who are supporting this show, who are supporting this project on coffee.com. Thank you so much for your support. And I want to do a very, very, very special shout out. So this is a project that has been, I think it came out in February in our Discord. It's from a French developer, Buster Ermi. Uh, he hasn't posted that much in recent times. So I always like getting worried that maybe the project got abandoned, but it's still being worked on it's almost getting to get release and it's fantastic so this is the impact and it's not released just yet but i think it will be very soon and if it will be i will post it definitely because wow, look at those sprites look at the amazing sprite work that's happening here um this is clearly inspired by advanced map tutorial the explosion looks so nice I, I really love how much stuff is moving on the screen that you have like um, meteors and how the enemies have different behaviors and there's always some kind of like moving around with the enemies this just looks so fantastic the shots are so meaty and it has like this very i don't know it's very like amiga kind of style to it or like i don't know maybe mega drive i don't know there's like these kind of like very earthy tones that he uses like definitely taking advantage i think of the uh, advanced color palette is it i'm not sure just incredible sprite work and uh, there's even like a teaser that there's going to be a final boss happening Oof, this is good stuff. Also, everybody was really, when they saw this, everybody was excited to, to look at the sprite sheet. This is a sneak preview of an early example of the sprite sheet. So you can see how Ermi really set up here this incredible system. It's so fantastic to see such a talented pixel artist having a go at a shmup using this tutorial. And I'm really hoping that this gets released soon. I'm, I can't wait to play this. Keep an eye out on V Impact by Buster Ermi. Yes, yes, yes. As always, this took a little bit of a time. We had to uh, clear up the fading and all this stuff. Like, this is just like gooey kind of stuff. 
but I think we got a pretty, we, you know, we polished up all of the rough edges of our game. Now we actually bring in new gameplay stuff. So next episode, Pinky Promise, we're gonna do the options and new shots. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.